Hi, I'm Andrew. In today's digital world, ensuring the security of your website has never been more important. One essential component of a secure website is a TLS certificate, which encrypts the data exchange between the user browser and the server. In this video, I will show you how I automated my process of obtaining a free TLS certificate from Let's Encrypt and setting it up for my website that hosted in Azure App Service. By following the simple steps, you can have your site up and running with a free TLS certificate almost in no time. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get started on making the internet a safer place for free. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So let's look at the problem first. And to look at the problem, I first go to my website this is my website and I see that and as you can see I have the problem here because the browser complains that my website is not secured of course this kind of message that your users don't want to see on your website otherwise they will not come and they will not stay and this is exactly what we want to prevent so for my website that is hosted in Azure App Service, I decided to use a free uh, certificate. The only problem with the free certificate obtaining by Let's Encrypt is that it's valid for only 90 days. But it's okay for me. So it means that I have to repeat the process each 90 days. If you don't know what is Let's Encrypt, you can find it if you just search for Let's Encrypt. This is their website. And again, if I click here on the Get Started, I will be able to see that they recommend to most people to use the third bot. And this is exactly what I'm going to use in my process. Yeah, so if I click on the third bot over here, and if I wanted to know more details about the third bot, of course, I can take it from this website. If you go to the Get Help, and if you go to the documentation, then there is a whole documentation for the third bot, how to use, what commands, and etc. In my case, I'm also wanted to use a container to just not install the third bot on my environment because I don't need it just only once per 90 days and you can find the instructions if you are clicking on the docker uh, but in my case I'm going to use the podman so let's see what podman is and if you just go to podman and then go to podman io then you will be able to see that the podman it's the past free and open source container tool. It's uh, made by the Red Hat and it can replace the Docker completely. If you already know how to use Docker, then you already know how to use Podman because all the commands are the same. Uh, I will go to my command line. And if you don't know if you have Podman or not, you can just type in your console Podman. So as you can see, I don't have a Podman installed. To install Podman, I can just type simply sudo apt install podman. And it's done. So the Podman is installed. If I just type right now Podman dash dash version to just see that it actually works, well, I see the version, which I have 3.4.4. .4. So I'm ready to run my script and this is exactly what I'm going to do. I decided to just show you how it works uh, in the beginning and then I will go deep to show you how it exactly works and what's inside the script. So I just clear the screen and I'm actually uh, is inside the folder where my uh, bash script is located. So just to be sure, I do ls and I see, yes, indeed, the third bot sh is there and I just run it. The first step that I need to do is to enter the password for PFX certificate. So the third bot that I'm going to use will generate the PAM certificate for me. But to be able to upload it to Azure, I need to have the PFX certificate. So, and for PFX certificate, I need to uh, provide the password. 
The second step, as you see, it's just pulling an image. And then uh, after the image is pulled of the third bot, it just asks me to insert a, a DNS TXT record to my uh, domain name. So um, this is the step, it's a manual step in my automation process that unfortunately I can't avoid. Uh, it's the step just to, pro just to prove that you are owner of your website to the Let's Encrypt. What I need to do, I need to go to my uh, domain provider, in my case it's a GoDaddy, and I need to just insert a DNS TXT record uh, with this particular name and with this particular value. And this is what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to uh, GoDaddy, And I'm going to my products and I'm going to DNS page of my domain because I already uh, issued the certificates for me so you see the, the old records are there so I need to just change the value of those records and I copy paste it from my uh, script over here so I just replace the old value to a new one. I click save and my domain is up, uh, updated. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the DNS record will not be appear immediately. So that's why uh, we need to wait a little bit. It takes uh, sometimes a few minutes to, uh, to distribute this value to all the DNS servers. Uh, but uh, uh, but the third bot, as you can see, provides me the URL. If I click on this URL, I will be able to see my uh, TXT records. And now I need to look at PW value and I'm looking into it and it's there. Yeah, so actually I can continue. So that's why, just to be sure, I refresh some pages. Again, it's there, so I can continue. I press enter. And now I need to repeat the step because previous step was for the domain on malkov.com and right now I'm doing the same for, uh, for the subdomains for my website. And again, I need to just copy this value and replace the old value to the new one on, in my DNS. So I'm replacing the value, I click save. It's updated and now the only thing that I need to do is just to wait uh, a little bit when this new value will be also available for my DNS name. And I see that it's finally here so I can return to my script and press enter to continue. Then my certificates will be generated and now I need to log into Azure using my account. And then you see the next steps. I'm setting the subscription, mapping the custom domain certificate, uploading the PFX certificate for me uh, with, with this particular thumbprint, and binding certificate to the web app. And it's finally done. So as you can see, the process is fully automated. So the only manual steps that I need to take is to just insert my uh, TXT DNS records to my domain. So let's look at now at my website right now. So again, if I go to ironmalkov.com, I see that the browser has no complaints anymore, that my, my website is secure by proper TLS certificate. After we have seen how it works, actually let's go and look inside the script, how it's built. I'm going to Visual Studio Code and let's look at the script itself. First of all, uh, the script defines the variables, like for example, the directory where the certificate will be stored, this one. Uh, in my case, yeah, I'm pointed to the drive D, uh, the apps folder, my, and, and then I'm Malkov, and then third bot folder, where I, I will store all the certificates. Then uh, the PFX pass. So it's a, it's a kind of workaround for AZ web app config SSL upload command uh, because it seems that it doesn't work with the Linux path. Yeah, so I need to provide the Windows, uh, uh, the pass in Windows format. Otherwise, it won't work. Then the domain, 
for which your certificate will be generated, uh, the subdomain, email, your email address, uh, subscription ID uh, in Azure, uh, tenant ID in Azure, uh, your resource group in Azure where your app is deployed, and your web app name in Azure as well. Nothing very complex here, just variables. The next thing, the next block is just to check that the directories are there that we specify because for a third bot we need to have ATC uh, directory and lib directory inside our folder. You remember the folder it's where we will store the certificate. In my case it's drive D app my and Malkov third bot. After I check and create all the folders uh, if they are not exist I'm asking to provide me a password for the PFX certificate because the third bot will generate the certificate in PEM format but I need to transform it to PFX format to be able to upload it to Azure. So um, then what I'm, what I'm doing next, I'm pulling an image of the third bot. Then uh, the next thing is to generate the certificate. So to generate the certificate for domain, so I run the container out of this container image. Uh, I'll provide some uh, folder mapping. As you can see, I map the, my folder uh, and then etc folder to etc let's encrypt. And as well as I map the folder lib to var lib and let's encrypt. Then I'm specifying what, what image I, uh, what I want to use to run the uh, container. Then some parameters like your email for example or domain and and then uh, the server which I'm going to use. So um, the next it's almost the same line the same lines just to it, but it will just generate the certificate not for the domain but for subdomain. After that when the certificate will be when the final certificate will be generated I'm actually uh, converting my certificate from PAM format to PFX uh, and I uh, do this with OpenSSL command. So I provide some parameters, PAM file, sort PFX file that I want to have at the end. So this is the, this is the input, this is the output, uh, as well as I want, I want to provide the password for my PFX certificate uh, because it contains private key. And then I provide the flag legacy. It's very important to provide this flag. Otherwise, you, will, you won't be able to use the certificate uh, in, in Azure. So uh, after that, so my certificate is ready. So after that, I'm actually moving to Azure part. And the first thing that I do in Azure, I execute the AZ command. So it's Azure CLI. I execute the Azure login and I provide my tenant ID to be sure that I'm logged in to the proper tenant. Otherwise, yeah, so if you log into another tenant, then the another tenant will be your default tenant. And to uh, override it, I just specify my tenant. Uh, the next thing after we log in, actually it will, it will run the browser uh, pop up. Yeah, so and inside the browser, you will you will type your, uh, your account, maybe your password. And afterwards, you will be returned back to the console where what we are going to do is to set the subscription. Yeah, so because you might have multiple subscriptions and I need to specify which subscription you want to use in Azure and this is done by az account set command. After that we are going to map our custom domain to our website so it's done by az web app config command uh, where we provide the web app name resource group and the host name uh, which is actually our domain uh, it's inside our variables remember and then actually uploading the PFX certificate to Azure. Uh, and we do that with the AZ Web App Config SSL upload command. Uh, when we provide the pass, you remember, we provide the pass in just this um, uh, Windows format. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the PFX pass, it's specific. Yeah, so in, in the Windows format. At the end, it will receive the sum print of the uploaded certificate. Uh, and after that, it will just print it out yeah, to, the, to our console. And why we need to have the sum print? Because uh, in the last command, we need to bind the uploaded certificate with our website. And it's done by az web app config SSL bind command. When we provide the web app name, of course, resource group, then we also need to provide the certificate sum print. So that's mainly it. Uh, this particular script allows me to automate my flow and the only manual uh, task that I have 
is to add my uh, txt dns records to my domain otherwise let's encrypt will be not sure that i'm owning this particular domain this is it for today and if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel see you next time bye